Here's my view this morning on this beautiful Saturday morning right here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. And I'm about to start my day. I'm going to go to the, uh, the Genocide Museum today. It's only 750 meters from my hotel. It's about a nine or ten minute walk. Eight or nine minutes, I think, to walk there. And then from there, I'm going to go to the Killing Fields, which is much farther. That's about eight kilometers. I'm sure I'll take a tuk-tuk from, the, um, uh, from the, the Genocide Center, the S-21 prison, to the, um, uh, to the Killing Fields. Nice names of these places, Genocide Museum, Killing Fields. Very, it's a very happy atmosphere around here. Um, I'll show, uh, I, I took a shower a short time ago, a cold shower. And that's because you seem to need some kind of a degree in uh, something to, to, to start the water, to get hot water. I'm, and I'm not sure what this is. The water came out of here, all right? You turn the water on there, and there's, there's just one tap. And the water comes out of there. Now you've got this uh, handheld nozzle, but I have no idea how to get the water out of there. There's no, you know, usually there would be a... a uh, a button or a lever or something that you, you s do to, to get it from, from here to here, but there's nothing. Now this is connected to this, I guess this is like a boiler like I have in my house in Mexico, but I have no idea how to get hot water from it. This is red, which indicates that there would be hot water, but it doesn't turn. Um, there's an ELB test. Now this, there's ELB. I don't know what ELB stands for. Uh, it is on. If I turn it off, the light goes off. It's on high. So there's no hot water. And then what a weird contraption. It goes, this tube, or well, I guess it's a tube, goes all the way from there, around there. Then one, of it splits off there into two factions. One goes out the window, one goes down the drain. And you can see when I took a shower, the, uh, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but of course the toilet gets all wet. There's no, um, no shower curtain, as I mentioned. And there wasn't, a, this, my, this is uh, similar to my hotel in Vietnam. I've seen in hotels like this in Mexico as well. Uh, and before I head out the door here, I want to say a, a hello and salutations and thank you to my friend Damien. Damien lives uh, in Melbourne, Australia, or I think as some Americans or Westerners would call it, Melbourne, uh, but he, or if you're in Australia, uh, Melbourne, I'm not sure if I said that right, but he lives in Melbourne, Australia. He's a friend of mine. We met a few years ago. Um, he came to, to visit Mexico and we spent some good time together. We went to El Chopo, we had a good time, spent a lot of money. It, was, it seemed that it was kind of a competition when we went to El Chopo. He bought one shirt, I felt like I had to buy another one and we went back and forth, head to head, toe to toe in the t-shirt battle at El Chopo. And uh, he sent me a message the other day saying that he's watching all these videos on, he's been following on YouTube as some of you have, thank you. Uh, but Damien sent me a message saying, hey, I'm, I'm really enjoying that, cool videos. Um, and so I wanted to say hello and thank you to Damien. It's nice. These, these videos are not viral. They're not setting YouTube on fire. They're not reaching the algorithm. They're getting less, maybe a hundred views. I think that the, the most successful one has about 220, something like that. And that's fine. But it's just amazing for me to think that I'm a, just a, uh, a guy from Canada living in Mexico for 17 years and I've, wanted to come here all my life and it's taken me this long to, to save some money and to be in a position that I can um, afford to do this maybe once in my life and I travel to the other side of the world and that people are interested in my um, exploits and antics and my long-winded stories and mundane uh, thoughts thank you very much it is it is cool I'm not I'm not really interested in um, being viral I, I don't make the uh, the customized thumbnails for the for the photo or for the for the the, the videos, um, I don't 
edit or, or have sound or subtitles or do the, the fast motion or the slow motion. It's just my life day by day on this trip. So thanks to Damien for that message and thanks to everybody who is, uh, who is watching as well. So I'm off to the genocidal center. I'm going to go down there. So I am on my way now to the uh, Genocide Museum down here. It's actually very close. My hotel is one street over, so I just had to walk one short block and then straight down this street. And I was a little bit confused about uh, what this place was because I've known it as the S21 prison. And before that, I guess it, it was originally a school and then they turned it into a prison in the uh, mid I guess, or late 70s, where they, they took uh, thousands of people there before they marched them off to the killing fields. But in, it's actually called now the, and I'm not sure how to pronounce it, the Tuol Sleng Genocide Museum. That's T-U-O-L, one word, S-L-E-N-G. I guess that's the proper name for it. Uh, so that's where I'm headed now. And I, I don't... Just like with the other museums, I'm not sure how much I'll actually, how much video I'll take in there. I think uh, museums don't translate well to video, as if the, the videos are not boring enough already. Uh, to add that as a museum makes it even even more boring. Oh, they got Ban Mi here. Uh, so I should be, uh, and then I'm going to go to the, uh, the killing fields after that. I, I did a little looking, and, and it seemed that the consensus was if you're going to do two to do the the S21 the, the prison, the museum first and then killing fields apparently because that was the order in, in which the, the people were killed they, they took them to the prison, questioned them and then marched them off to the killing fields where they were killed so I should be there momentarily there it is quite nondescript it's just uh, very simple you can see this has not been this is not like a museum that they built uh, you know to make it all nice and fancy and nice lighting and displays I mean I haven't been inside but just looking at it it seems that it it's uh, it's as it stood this is the school and it looks very very basic and stark which I guess is how it should look I'll go inside now it's the absolute worst timing ever to get here. As I uh, cross the street to walk over here, a bus pulled up with this giant group of tourists. That really makes it very unpleasant for me. I want to, I don't know if I should wait and let them go ahead or if I should sneak in and, and rush in and get ahead of them, but uh, uh. It's a holiday in Cambodia where people dress in black. Now I know where that line comes from.
Hey, Patrick, you can see the picture here. Okay. That is upstairs. But downstairs, what is this? Single room. Yeah. Big room. Yeah. And this picture, how they were structured, they took away the keys. And then how they Warms my heart to see a little kitty after all this stuff in the museum. Good kitty, good kitty, 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 kitty. There were 20,000 people, over 20,000 people that were killed in this prison. Only 11 survivors, seven men and four children. These are two of the children here. And this is one of them here. Yeah, I'd like to meet you. Very, very, yeah. Uh... Yeah, I am here, Nong Chan Pal. I'm trying to buy these people that leave. I don't know what to say. 1979, I'm born nine years old. My younger brother was six years old. All together, five child and three ladies with my mother. The Khmer were arrested from Kampong Spur province, 75 kilometers from here. How we could survive? Because they are Vietnamese army, Liberation Army, come join with the Cambodian Liberation Army fighting the city. The Khmer start move, collect prisoners, get out of here. I heard like that, then I heard my mother told me. When the Khmeru separated me from my mother, son, my mother told me, son, take care of your brother. What happened? Don't run away from him. Look after him. My mother told me like that as she cried. No time. I took the baby and me all together. We are hiding in a big pile of clothes, with thin clothes, waiting for my mother to come back. It took me home. But he doesn't come back. The Khmeru killed my mother and father. And one baby from an old died. Don't have me many days. Only four still alive. Six months old, nearly died. They are have medicine the room. They cut the room, put the most who survive. But they are lucky than me. They were adopted to each other money. 1986. Yeah. <coughs> now only me and my younger brother in Cambodia now. Before I never thought I come back this place again because what he said to me. 2014, unfortunately, I'm got traffic accident and broken caliboon. I could not work with the machine, Abu Dusha tractor. I'm no choice. I come back here again because now I got family. I got two daughters now. And then I'm so hard like they are much to be better than me in the future. Oh, very good for I'm you. I'm no choice. Very I good. come back here again. Yeah, for support, yeah, I study. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and I will buy your book. Thank you. Incredible. I can't believe what you had to go through. Thank you. I'm blown away by that. I can't believe that... Uh, that that just happened but that guy and I bought uh, and there were there were three other survivors too and uh, but that first guy um, the the other three I talked to them I, I bought all their books and I I hate being dramatic and uh, What else can I do but buy the books? Um, I guess first of all, the this is just a, not directly related to the survivors, but just the the history of you know Cambodia and Kampuchea, which I think was the the French Khmer name for it, uh, and then it got renamed I think to, to uh, Cambodia. 
This is the guy I talked to. He's a doctor now. I, I think he said in the video, and I, I talked to him for, uh, aside from the video, I, I spoke to him for about 10, uh, maybe seven or eight minutes. And um, just, you know, asked him some questions and uh, he was very, very nice. I can't believe how nice this guy is after what he went through as a, I think he said he was nine years old when that happened. Taken from his parents with his brother. He said his mother told him, look after, uh, look after your brother. And then the mother was killed. Father was killed. So it was just, just the two young boys. So uh, I got that book. And uh, th this, these, these two were on my, um, on my list of uh, people that I wanted to, to know about. I'd, I'd written notes about this trip, things that I, there were some books I wanted to buy, and, uh, some other things, and that one, and uh, this one, and this guy was also there. I met him. I, I think this guy and the next guy didn't speak English, and they're much older too. These, uh, the one guy. This guy is now 92 years old, and he was in there. He was just eating his lunch. He was sitting down eating a, a bowl of rice and some vegetables. And um, 92 years old, and, and after what he went through, so this was, what, 43 years ago? Um, let, let's say, so, so he was like 50 years old when this happened. He, he was, you know, well into adulthood and, and is still not just survived this horrible place but has, has survived for 92 years 92 years that guy is good for so I got that book as well and uh, this one this guy he was also in there uh, he's also I mean he, he's an old guy now um, but just what a what a what an experience that was and the the museum is I guess what you would expect for a, a genocide museum. I don't know what else you can say. I was very impressed that nobody spoke. Nobody, they have a few signs up saying, please don't speak. And people were very respectful of that. I, didn't, I don't think I heard anybody speaking, uh, not even whispering, except when the, the tour groups came through. Uh, and it cost, uh, how much did it cost to get in? I can't remember. I think it was 40000 Real, which is ten dollars, which I guess is pretty expensive for, for Cambodia, but um, man, I uh, you know I, I would have paid anything that they had asked, uh, and I'm I'm very happy not just to have these books, and I guess I don't know if they're available on an Amazon or somewhere else, but uh, it's it's just made me feel very not not to sound selfish, but very good that I I bought it from the guys in the museum. So uh, after that, now, after this great fun time I had here, and I was in there uh, a little bit over two hours, about two hours and five minutes in this museum, and now after that, I'm going to go to uh, the wonderfully named Killing Fields. I'm taking Tuk Tuk today because my, uh, my tattoo that I got the other day is kind of wonky. I think it's a little bit infected even, I would say. It's bleeding and red and sore, and my foot is swollen as if I weighed uh, 150 kilos. So I'm, so I'm going in luxury today on the Tuk Tuk. And it's a fair distance. It's about eight or nine kilometers, uh, which is a long way to walk in one stretch. Uh, so I'm taking Tuk Tuk, and it's, this is going to be eight, this is uh, 18,200 Real, which is 450 US. survivor from the, uh, the genocide museum I was I was really surprised that in the maybe I don't know as I said seven or eight minutes that I talked to him uh, and he had his books out on the table selling them 
and people were walking past, including some large groups of people, and he kind of introduced himself and said who he was. He said I was a survivor, and people were just like, and they kept walking. I was really quite surprised at that, that people weren't, uh, man, I saw that guy, I had a, instantly a million questions for him, wanted to talk to him, of course, bought his book immediately. Uh, it was kind of sad, uh, and I'm not saying that I'm a, a great person for doing that, I'm just surprised that more people weren't as amazed as I was. Like, for me, that was like coming across, uh, you know, the, the president of a country or, I don't know, Gene Simmons or, or, you know, something like that. I was just in awe of seeing this guy, and other people didn't care. I just thought that was interesting. Tuk Tuking continues. me again. I just realized this is a really long ride. This is uh, my estimated, I just checked grab. I wasn't paying attention, but my estimated arrival time is 109 and it's 1240 now, so that's 29 minutes from now. And I've already been driving about six or seven minutes. This is more than a, a 30 minute ride. Uh, it's a long way. It's nice though. I get a nice breeze. My, uh, my toupee is flowing in the wind. Uh, it feels a little bit cool. I'm not really seeing the sights because uh, it's kind of like this, but uh, yeah, no way. Even without this infected uh, tattoo, I would even say badly infected tattoo, which is quite sore and just irritating and itchy. Even without that, this would have been a long way to walk in one stretch. Uh, and then I gotta, I guess, take a foot back. So uh, this is a... Uh, quite a long haul, so I'll, I'll try to sit back and enjoy this and not take any more video. I just finished reading one of the, the books that I bought at the Genocide Museum on the ride. And uh, after we stop for fuel here, I'll see if I can maybe finish almost another one. Just what I need today, more genocide. Uh, and that, that was a, a long trip. That was 38 minutes that uh, Tuk Tuk ride. And it was uh, 18,200 pesos, which as I mentioned is $4.50 from the uh, Genocide Museum. No, to the, uh, yeah, the Genocide Museum to the Genocidal Center. And I'm not sure where the, ent I think this is the entrance right here behind me. I'm not sure how much it is. Uh, I see. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'll, I'll, I'll investigate. There's, I'm going to get a drink first. I haven't had anything to drink or eat since last night. I've entered the killing fields, and this one includes a, an audio tour included in the price. And this was, uh, how much was this? $206 US or 200 and, no, 24,000 rails. Yeah, 6 bucks US. I can't even remember how much the, the one this morning was. I think it was more than that wasn't it i think oh it was it was 10. Uh, i think that one's much more popular because it's right in the city this is a little bit on the outskirts so uh here i am in the killing fields i'm gonna have the slayer song killing fields uh first song from divine intervention i'm gonna have that in my head all day No, thank you.
uh, I'm with my Japanese friends. Uh, Japanese son. <laughs> and uh, we, I saw these guys at the, uh, the museum several hours ago, and they also came here. And so instead of me spending a lot of money for a tuk tuk all by myself, these guys let me ride with them. So I cut my cost by two thirds. That's almost 66%. Good man, huh? Yeah. Uh, so did you guys like the killing field? Yeah, very sad. Everything is sad. Which which did you like more, the killing field or the museum? I think I like. Uh, we have a tendency to make comparisons, especially when you do something so close together, and especially things related. So I did the museum this morning and the killing field this afternoon. Um, I think if I could do one. If I only had time to do one, this is not a recommendation. This is just what I, my my preference. Uh, I think I like the killing field better now. The fact that I met those guys, the survivors at the museum, that put that over the top. But the museum, uh, it was very cool. A lot of the same thing, uh, and it was indoors. Although the thing that was cool about it was that it's not just a museum that they built. The museum is the actual building where the atrocities took place. Uh, compared to the War Remnants Museum in Vietnam, which is awesome. That was my favorite museum I think that I've ever been in. But they built it specifically as a museum. Um, but I, I think if I were going to just come to see one of them, uh, I think I like this one better. The, the audio tour was excellent. Do you guys like it, the, the audio tour? Yes. Yeah, it was very good. It was uh, very, very well organized. Everything is marked really well. There's not much signage there because everything you... Uh, you know comes from the uh, the uh, the headphones, so it was excellent. I was there, I think it was about an hour and a half. Uh, so a very good trip. So these guys are going to their hotel, which is somewhat close to my hotel, which is uh, somewhat close to the Russian market. So we got a Canadian living in Mexico, a couple of Japanese guys in Cambodia, and I'm going to the Russian market. So a lot of nationalities involved in this trip. So uh, this is going to be a 35 minute ride, 40 minute ride, something like that. And I think I'll be hitting the, what time is it? Almost 3 o'clock, about 2 minutes to 3. So uh, I'm going to be hitting the Russian market next. Love the Tuk Tuk ride. 6 o'clock, 6.02 to be precise. I've just left my hotel. I got back to my hotel around 4 o'clock. I think I mentioned I was going to go to the, uh, the Russian market. I was with those, uh, those nice Japanese guys in the tuk-tuk and it turned out that their hotel is like one block from mine um, so we shared that tuk-tuk I was gonna go to the Russian market but as we we're tuk-tuking I discovered that the Russian market closes at 430 and this was around I can't remember what time that was I would have been at the Russian market around 330 and I think going to markets at the end of the day is not so good. You want to go there. And I would have spent more than an hour too. So I didn't want to go at the end. So I'll do the Russian market tomorrow. Um, and I did get some... Uh, I just spent about two hours in the hotel. Just resting, not napping, but uh, posting some crap on social media. And not texting anybody because all, all my friends are... It's the middle of the night where all my friends are. So none of that, but just uh, just relaxing, charging my phone. Uh, had a beer. Uh, first beer I've had here was called Cambodia. Was the was the name of the beer? I'm not sure how long their marketing team spent coming up with that name, but I drank a Cambodia beer. It was cool. It had the if you remember, if you're old, you remember these um, the pop off tops that it, it's you, you pull it and you actually remove it. You tear it off. I haven't seen one of those since. Ooh, the 80s maybe? It's been a long time since I've seen one of those. I kind of didn't know what it was. I popped it and then it, it didn't open. I, I thought it was broken or something. And I realized you got to tear the whole thing off. Uh, so, what kind of car is this? Toyota... Something. Never heard of it. Like an SUV. Um, what else can I say? I got some, uh, some medicated cream for my infected tattoo. I had to go to many pharmacies to get that. And uh, I got it, and the woman said, the pharmacist said uh, to put it on about three times a day, and it should be cleared up in uh, 
She said three to five days. She asked me specifically, is it itchy? And I said, yes, very, very itchy. And she gave me a, a medicated cream. She said, Bep and that. She looked at it and uh, held her, her head in horror at how infected it was and said that Bepenthan wasn't good enough and I needed something medicated, so I got that. Uh, and I'm heading now to the, uh, to the night market. I still haven't eaten anything today. Really, not one bite of food. I had uh, my dinner last night in the other video, and that was it. And I just haven't been hungry today. I don't know if it's the, um, th that it's hot or uh, just that I feel full from yesterday because I ate so much crap yesterday. The, all the snacks and everything kind of made me feel gross. And, but I just haven't felt hungry today. Maybe also from just the, I don't know, the emotion of going to these, these places, the Genocide Museum and the Genocide Center, the Killing Fields. I don't know if that had something to do with it, but uh, for whatever eaten I have, for whatever reason I haven't eaten today, and I'm about to, where I'm headed right now is the, uh, the Phnom Penh Night Market. It's Google Maps has a 36 minute walk for me, so I'll walk to this night market and uh, get something to eat for sure and look around the market. I, I guess they have goods as well, like they have, uh, I guess it's primarily a, a food market, but apparently they also sell goods, I guess the typical baked stuff. So that's where I'm headed now. So uh, I think I have to make a turn here. Uh, so I'll sign off for now and, and check Google Maps and return shortly. This is something about Cambodia or about Phnom Penh that I have mixed feelings about. This barrier that they put uh, in the middle of major avenues like this. Um, because I've been burned twice already. I've only been here a little bit over 24 hours where you want to go like here. And it's, it's really far between intersections. You can see it's up there. And way the fuck down there. I can't even see the other intersection. And I guess maybe as a guest, I don't want to uh, hop the barrier. And I haven't seen anybody do it. Uh, so it's, it's not like, you know, you can just follow what the locals do. Because locals don't seem to do that. Maybe they know where to cross. So it's good that they're, they're you know, trying to keep people safe from crossing busy streets. But it's uh, a little bit of a pain in the nuts if you don't know exactly where you're going. This is a market, and it is night, but I don't think this is the night market that I'm looking for. I think that's uh, a little bit further up and uh, on the other side of the street. I don't know, though. Sometimes with these markets, they uh, expand onto the street, and maybe this is considered part of the night market. But Google Maps says it's over here. Yes, this is the night market I was looking for. This is... Uh, a place mostly eating, you get your food, and you sit on the mats, and you eat. I don't know what happens when it rains. It's not going to rain the, the time that I'm here today or the next couple of days I'm here. But uh, that would be disastrous if you're sitting here and it rains. But I guess people know how to deal with that. People cope. And do you keep your shoes on here? I see most off. I don't see, ah, I see the shoes. They, they keep their shoes on the edge, the edge of these mats over here. Look at the kitty. All right, I'll look. Some stuff looks great, some stuff, I don't know. Like, I don't know what that is, but it's not, not, uh, not appealing to me. Is it tripe? Some kind of intestines? 
Little clams, piss clams. I think those are called piss clams. pretty much the same stuff as I just showed. I don't know if it's self-serve. This guy is, uh, I guess he's serving himself. I don't know if he works here. He looks like a customer. The rolls look amazing. They look fantastic. Very fresh and well prepared. Big shrimp. Chicken. Fried chicken, right? Yeah, fried chicken. All right. Moving on to the goods. The Saigon fake shoe market puts the Cambodian fake shoe market to shame. I've walked around, the, it's like a square here. And I think I've pretty much done a complete lap and it seems that they all, all the food vendors have the same thing. They have uh, piss clams, snails, I guess these are some kind of dumplings. Rolls, chicken legs, fresh rolls, summer rolls. Big shrimp or prawn, as the British call them. All these things on a stick are very mysterious. All right, I think I did it. It was a little bit of a challenge getting the food, as it tends to be. But I'm sit on the seated on the map mat, and I'm about to uh, to eat this. Let me take a, a closer look with better light at this. Right, duh, this is just uh, noodles with some green stuff. No meat, nothing, just uh, just noodles. And this I got, you, you choose individually. You can get whatever you want. So I got one of these uh, fresh summer rolls. You get two of these fried crispy uh, spring rolls. There's two on a stick, you get an order of two. This is a uh, dollar, one dollar. A lot, of, almost everything here is in US prices. One dollar for this uh, fresh uh, shrimp uh, summer roll. 50 cents for the total for the two crispy spring rolls. I got one big shrimp that's also 50 cents. Uh, and I got a stick of whatever those things are, dumplings. I'm not sure what it is, but that stick was also 50 cents. So it's 50, 50, 50, $1, 50, 2, 50. I don't know how much the noodles are, but I guess the total is going to be around three fifty, four dollars $4 maybe, somewhere around there. And I think I'm going to try eating it for Ty at his encouragement. I mentioned that I didn't like eating on camera, or I don't like seeing other people eating on camera. I think it's kind of gross. 
Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it as a as encouragement, as a, a request from a from Ty, a new a new uh, follower who's been following me. Um, he he said, hey, don't you sh you should be on camera. So now you you can't see the uh, the food here, but I'm I'm mixing it up. And oh, I should have pre sauced it. Uh, let me see. This is uh, what do they got here? Some red chili sauce. This is why I don't eat on camera. Too much work. It's one of the reasons. I don't know what that is. Uh, this looks hot. I'll, I'll put this uh, salsa on the, the noodles. Let's see how this works out. I hope it's not ketchup. I haven't seen ketchup in nine days that I've been here. Uh, so I don't, I don't think it's ketchup. And I'll try this other one on my fried stuff. Alright, that smells, smells good. Not very good lighting. People are crowding around me. People are slipping and sliding. I can't even see. I, I think that's enough salsa. Put this back hygienically. All right. Something that I like about Cambodia is uh, the chopsticks here are much smaller, easier to uh, to manipulate, and they're wooden too. I like these better. I think before I came here on this trip. Uh, nine or ten days ago. I used chopsticks twice in my life with horribly disastrous results. I'm a pro now. I'm not one of those people that can pick up individual grains of rice with chopsticks. But I've, uh, I think I've become quite good. Let me, let me try the I said he, he likes this because he likes to see the, uh, the reaction that people make. And that's why I don't like it. Everybody, when you're, when you're recording your reaction, it's going to tend to be fake. So people are going to have an orgasm face, whether they like it or not. Uh, it's just noodles. I mean, how, what, what can you do with this? All right, so uh, let, me, let me get a good, a good it's good, it's what you expect, it's noodles. And you know what, about 20, maybe more than 20 years ago, when I still lived in Canada, when I still lived in Canada, I worked in a place with a bunch of Vietnamese guys, I think about probably 20 of them. I remember I used to see them eating, and they would just put their head down and and slurp the noodles and slurp the soup, and I didn't like it. It actually turned me off uh, uh, Vietnamese food or, or some Asian food, but now that I'm eating it, I can see why they uh, choose to eat like that. All right now, I'll try, uh, I'll try one of these uh, fried crispy rolls. I'm not sure what's in the middle. I guess it's pork. One of the uh, dim sum or dumpling? Let me try one. Everybody's watching me. Oh, can you see me on the camera? Do I look good? Do I look good? Oh, thank you. Mm. Oh. The dumpling things are the best so far. I like those a lot. I think the uh, the summer rolls and the shrimp, I'll, I'll eat with my fingers. Is the, um, kind of basil or 
Bay's on? Oh, it is banana. It tastes very fresh. And now the last one going around the horn. Was this, uh, this giant crispy fried shrimp. It's very good too. Not much you can do with crispy fried shrimp. You can't fuck it up. It's always great. Very successful. I think I'm very happy with what I eat. Now, sorry to disappoint Ty or anybody else. There's no way I'm going to eat this whole meal. You should probably be thankful for that. So now that I've tried everything, I've gone around the world, I think I will uh, turn turn that. I'll take one more uh, plate, one more thing of noodles. Yeah. Very good. Love everything. Not disappointed in anything. I guess that's the main thing. I'm going to show you my people here. That's my crowd. All right, back to eating. Uh, the verdict, very good. But that's, that's just too much for me to eat at this time. It's... Uh, it's eight o'clock now, and I usually don't eat anything. Usually if I eat anything after seven o'clock, it'll be just an apple or a banana, maybe pineapple or mango, fruit anyway. Those are all types of fruits. Uh, so for me to eat uh, something fried and heavy and all that stuff, uh, like that, that's like a three o'clock lunch for me. Lunch is my main meal of the day. Um, I maybe won't eat again until tomorrow, I don't know, maybe around this time again, tomorrow I feel very, very full and uh, just fat and lazy and greasy. Oh, and, I, and also I got my hands all sticky and, and uh, stuff, picking up the, the shrimp and the, the shrimp rolls or the uh, egg uh, spring rolls with my hands and they have sauce on them, so your hands get sticky. And then um, they, don't, they have napkins, but they don't have wet naps. I even asked if they had something wet and they said no. So my, my hands got very, very sticky. I couldn't do anything. I had to walk around and find somebody that had a... Uh, I found somebody that had a bucket of water. And I kind of uh, rinsed my hands off in the water. But they, I think they're still a little bit sticky. Um, I, th I think I'll, uh, I'll start walking back to my hotel now. Oh, I forgot the price. That was an even 20,000 reals, which is $4.95 uh, US. Pretty good. Seems, I, I guess you'd pay around the same uh, for something like that in Vietnam, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I think Thailand is probably a little bit more expensive, but uh, 20,000 reals, 4.95 for that. Pretty good price. Can't remember the last time I had a Slurpee. Decades, probably. And I had to come all the way to Phnom Penh, Cambodia, the other side of the world, to get a Coca-Cola Slurpee. This is probably old news for you Slurpee aficionados, but uh, I'm kind of disappointed that the straws, Slurpee straws are different. This, they used to be thick and wide with a little scoop on the end so you could scoop it from the top. Uh, and these are just a little thin, uh, there's probably a name or a size for this kind of straw, but I don't like it. I, li I like the big thick... Uh, Slurpee straw and that we do whoops I'm shaking the camera we do have 7-eleven in Mexico but for some reason no slurpees not not uh, not sure why you, you know that's uh, slurpees and 7-eleven go together but no slurpees in, in Mexico I'm a block away from my hotel seems like a good time to shut it down for the night tomorrow I will go to that Russian market went there yesterday they were just closing, didn't go today. I wouldn't have had time really to enjoy it. So I will go tomorrow. I think tomorrow I'll also go to, by the time you see this, I will maybe have done it, to a place called Wat Pen. Then Phnom Pen, Wat Pen. It's uh, in the, kind of around the area. If I had, if it had been daytime, I would have done this uh, today. Yes, hello. This guy likes it. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Um, so I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. 
Had a little temperature check. I haven't given a temperature update. I just checked now and at uh, 8, 8.40 p.m. It's a balmy 30 degrees. So I am at my hotel here. It's kind of orange red building. Sky Park. Park Sky. Sky Park. No internet. That's another thing. I have to come down here to the lobby. With all these people here today, that's what I have to do if I want to upload this video. Because there's no internet in my room. They have like five networks and I can't connect to any of them. So, over and out for tonight. See you tomorrow.